Today, it's a delight to welcome a very special guest with us as our speaker today. We're celebrating African American History Month, and we are acknowledging people who have made great contributions to our world and our society, and especially to our spiritual lives. Reverend Dolores Voorhees is truly one who has made a powerful impact upon the lives of so many across the Atlanta community. You may recognize her, having seen her on television, in the television show sponsored by the Hillside International Truth Center, where uh, Reverend Bishop Dr. Barbara King is the senior minister and has served there for years. Well, uh, Dolores has also been on the staff there for years and offering dynamic truth, ministry, insight, education, love, grace, mercy, all kinds of wonderful pastoral attributes. She's been sharing them with this congregation in a dynamic way. Recently, she has resigned from the Hillside Truth Center to enable herself to take that ministry all across the world. We're excited that she's beginning right here because we know the world starts here anyway. Uh, so we're excited about that because we know a great future is ahead for her and it all begins right here with us. Amen. So today's going to be an exciting moment as we get to hear her share truths from her heart that inspire us to be the people of God that we're called to be. I know that you're going to just receive something very special. So take a deep breath and release. Get ready to receive because we are welcoming an exciting moment in truth that's being provided by us by a wonderful anointed speaker, Reverend Dolores Voorhees. Would you give her a round of applause as she comes? Thank you, Dr. Paul. I was like, oh my goodness, who are you talking about? <laughs> Who is she? Good morning, City of Light. I am so happy to be here with you this morning. I have known Dr. Paul for a while now, and we share with some other New Thought ministers on a regular basis. But my topic for today is the power of now. The power of now. In the scripture we read earlier, behold, now is the accepted time, comes from the Old Testament, and the book is by Eckhart Tolle. And if you think about your life, most of the time we have this question, we say, when? And then most of the time we say, well, not now. Um, I need to do this first. I need to get my advanced degree. I need to wait for the kids to graduate from college. I need to wait until I retire. I need to wait until something else happens. Does anybody identify with that? Am I the only one that's been waiting? <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you that the wait is over. The wait's over. And it's simply your decision. It's simply your choice. We've been waiting, and we really can't beat ourselves up. We can't uh, be upset with ourselves. We've been conditioned to wait. You waited until you turned six years old so you could go to school. You waited until your birthday came so you could have a party. You waited until you got old enough to go to the movies for the first time, unchaperoned by your parents. You waited until you had your first date. You waited until you got your driver's license. You waited until you got legal when you turned 21. We've been conditioned to wait. We programmed our subconscious mind to wait. And for some reason that's carried over into our lives and now we're waiting for God's good. We're waiting. We've got dreams, we've got plans, but we put them off. We're waiting. Stop waiting. Stop waiting. Now is the appointed time. Now. Now is the only time you have. Do you realize that? We think about our past. So much of our lives are conditioned and controlled by what happened in our past. Eckhart Tolle in his book says, all negativity is caused by an accumulation of psychological time and denial of the present. Unease, 
anxiety, tension, stress, worry, all forms of fear are caused by too much future and not enough present. Guilt, regret, resentment, grievous, gr grievances, sadness, bitterness, and all forms of non-forgiveness are caused by too much past and not enough presence. We're either looking at the past or worrying about the future. And we're not enjoying the now. Someone said, yesterday is a canceled check, tomorrow is a promissory note, today is the only cash you have, spend it wisely. How are you going to spend it? What are you going to choose to do? Who are you going to choose to be? Now is the only time you have. Now is the only time you can change your life. Whatever happened in the past is over whether you like it or not, whether it was good or not so good, whatever way you want to define it, it's over. And the only time you can make a change for the future is in the now. We don't have to worry about the future. Do what we need to do now. Choose the thoughts that are positive. Choose the thoughts that are living, uplifting. Choose to make decisions now that will affect the future. Think about that. What you're deciding today is going to affect what happens in your tomorrows. Even so far as what we eat today, will it not affect your body? Can you taste yesterday's meal? But yet we linger in the past and what we used to do and how things used to be and who did what to us. Many of us, I know, have had experiences earlier on in our life that were not pleasant, that were really not something we want to deal with, but we keep playing it over and over and over again in our mind. If you keep playing it over, you keep creating the same situation, so you keep having the negative experience. You keep having the negative emotions. We have to understand what we do, what we choose to think, what we choose to say, what we choose to visualize, what we choose to feel, all affect what's happening in our lives today and in the future. Your now is right now. You know, I drive, and I get on 285 sometimes, sometimes 85, and I have to admit, see, I'm going to tell the truth on myself. I'll drive, and then I'll look up because I'm thinking about something else. My mind is a million miles away, and I'm like, where am I? Am I, am I on 85 or am I on 285? Where am I going? And I start looking for a sign or something that lets me know where I am. We, we lose ourselves. We get so caught up in our mind, we're not in the present moment. And, you know, it's really not a good idea for me to be somewhere else when I'm on the road. But I am. I have to tell the truth. I'm thinking about something else, an appointment I've got coming up, something I've got to do, but I'm not conscious of where I am in the moment. Many of you drive to work. You take the same route every day. Now, when you first started driving that route, you were probably very conscious of what was around you and where you were going and where you should turn and what have you. Now, We've got GPS, so we just listen to that little voice tell us where to go. We really don't pay attention. But I'm going to suggest something to you. What about any route that you take on a regular basis? If you start looking for something new and something different, noticing what's there. Many times you drive a route and you, you see a new restaurant open up or a new shop open up. And pay attention. That's what all of life is telling us. Pay attention. Be in the present moment. We pray and we ask for blessings of all sorts. But 
guess what? Do you hear when the answer comes? Are you in the present moment? Because that's the only place you can get the answer. You can't get the answer worrying about yesterday or what happened yesterday that you can't undo, it's done, or worrying about the future. We have to be in the present moment. We have to live in the now. The only time we change anything is now, now, now. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why they call it a present. You're in the present. Each day is a gift. What are we creating? We're talking about new thought. We're talking about our thoughts and what we think and what we say, what we do. What are you creating for yourself? Don't let anything be a barrier to your good. Don't let your age be a barrier. Don't let your circumstances, don't let the color of your skin, your sexual orientation, or any other thing be a barrier to your good. Because in the now is where you create. Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. What's more abundant look like to you? Have you ever thought about it? Or are you just trying to make it from one day to the next? just trying to exist? What are you visualizing for yourself? Are you seeing yourself healthy and whole? Are you seeing yourself prosperous? Are you seeing yourself with the money that you desire? Are you seeing yourself living, being, doing, and having all that you desire? Do you know that it's possible? But you have to create it in the now. So in the now, you would have to visualize what the end result looks like. Scripture says, call the end from the beginning. What does it look like? What does it look like when you're prosperous? What does it look like when you're healthy? What does it look like when that business that you got is up and running? What does it look like? What does it feel like? Scripture tells us where two or more join together, there I'm in the midst. Well, you know, we think of two or three people coming together and praying and in the midst of that situation, we can get our prayer answered. But when your mind, your heart, and your mouth are joined together and aligned, you also get an answer. We need to pay more attention to what we're thinking, saying, and doing, and feeling. Our thoughts operate the brain, but our feelings come from the heart. Our feelings are like magnets that draw things to us. So what are you feeling? What do you want? What do you believe is possible? You know, I love Jesus' teachings because I look at them and as I study them, I say, hmm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. You know, Jesus told us that the things that he did, we could do also. How many of you really believe that? You know, do you really think you have that power? Because the same energy, the same presence and power that created Jesus created you and I. And that power is in you. And it moves through you. And that's what's operating your body temple and aligning all those things, your heartbeat and all of those things that are going on at one time. If you had to think about it, we wouldn't be here because we couldn't get our heart and our lungs and all of the things that are going on in our body going on at one time. There's that infinite presence within us. But that presence that's within us is also in Jesus. And you can do those things that you want to do. You can do those things that he did and, you know, that's been my thing lately. It's like, okay, I'm going to work this thing. I'm going to work this thing. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to apply these principles. I'm going to see myself healed. I'm going to see myself prospered. I mean, you know, just making this change. I had a salary one day, and now I don't. But I believe that that infinite presence is going to take care of me no matter what. 
I don't have to describe how, I don't have to think about. One of my teachers told me early on, your business is what? God's business is how? That infinite intelligence knows far more than I could ever know. So all I have to do is trust in it, believe in it, and speak truth, and let it work in and through me and as me. So what are you choosing for you today? What do you want to do? What do you want to be? What do you want to have? Visualize yourself being, doing, and having. I'm going to give you a challenge. Think about one goal, one thing you'd like to have that you don't currently have right now. And start forming a picture of what that would look like in your mind. And affirm every day that you are being that, doing that, or having that, regardless of the appearances. You know, I know many of us, as I look around the room, we've been here a minute or two. So we've had some experiences. And maybe we've even had some health challenges. And we're still here. In 2016, I was laying in an emergency room. Prognosis wasn't very good. And I, as I laid on the stretcher, I said, God, I surrender. Because I knew there was nothing else I could do at that point in time, at that moment in time. I'm on this stretcher. I'm in pain. And I'm not a doctor. I don't know what's going on in my body, but I know it hurts. And I surrendered. And the nurse came to me. They were going to run tests and what have you. Nurse came to me and she said, Miss Voorhees, we're going to take you to do some tests. And Dr. Faith is going to put a drain in you. Now, I've heard of a lot of women whose first name is Faith, but I have never heard of a last name being Faith. And I said, okay, God, you got this. I stayed in the hospital eight days. And every time they came, and I don't know how often, I don't know if any of you are nurses or what have you, but I don't know how often they can draw blood from you. But every time they could draw blood from me, they were in my room. And what they were trying to do was determine what was going on in my body. But every time they drew blood, when they took it down to the lab to look at it again, it had changed. And they kept coming back to get more, and they would take it back down there, and it had changed. And they were wondering what's going on, and they got this specialist and that specialist and this specialist coming in, and they're talking and carrying on, and I'm just smiling. I said, I know what's happening. That presence and that power is working in my body. I'm being healed. I know what's going on. I know what's going on. And they check. I mean, honestly, I really thought I was a pincushion. They kept getting blood and getting blood. They got the infectious disease uh, doctor. And, what, and they kept wondering what to do. They were trying to figure out what to give because every time they thought they had it, it changed. I went home from the hospital. I was home 90 days. I had a line in my arm. I had home nurses. And I was taking intravenous medication. When the nurse finally came to take the line out of my arm, she said, Dolores, 
do you know we called you our miracle client? I said, why? She said, Dolores, I read your chart. You're not supposed to be here. But I had a faith. I had a belief. I know there were those of who were praying for me and with me. And I'm here in spite of the appearances. So why am I saying that or why did I tell you that story? Because I want you to understand that you're greater than you think you are. There's more power in you than you'll ever know. When Jesus said, these things that I do and even greater things shall ye do, that was the truth. You're an awesome individual. I don't care what your background is or what you've experienced in the past. I'm here to tell you, you are something special. And there's no one else in the universe who can replace you or do what you came here to do for the universe. Just like our fingerprints are all individual, even identical twins are still different. You are a special part of this universe, and no one can do what you came here to do. No one can bring the light that you can bring. No one can bring the truth that you can bring. No one can bring what you bring to this universe. And because you're here, that in itself says you're important. That you're special. That you're dynamic. That you're powerful. So, Recognize that when you get up in the morning and you go into that bathroom and you go brush your teeth and wash your face and jump in that shower, look yourself in the eye and say, I am, whatever your name is, in my, uh, my mirror, I am Dolores expressing as God in all my glory, beauty, and magnificence. And that's who you are in all your glory, all your beauty, and all your magnificence. You're sitting here in the city of light. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. You don't have to open your mouth. Walk into the room and just your presence will say, somebody's here, something special, somebody." I just walked into this room and there's a light. I see it all around them. I felt it when they walked in. That's who you are. You're special. But realize that now. Now. Now is the only time we have. So whatever you've been procrastinating about, whatever you've been dreaming about, whatever you've been planning for, Stop procrastinating. Be about doing it. Take the first step. Watch the universe open up and make a way. Give you the guidance and the direction. It may be something so simple as to go on a trip. Fine. Plan where you want to go. Know how many days you want to be there. Figure out what hotel you want to stay in. Don't worry about the fact you don't have the money. That's not a problem. But just start making a step. Start moving now. And watch the universe open up and show you and make the way. You want healing? See yourself whole. Love your body temple. Love the presence of that spirit that's operating in you, through you, and as you. Know that nothing is impossible for you because nothing is impossible for our creator. And you're made in the image and after the likeness of the creator. Yes, you are special. And now is your time. Now is your time. Not later. Don't put it off. Now. 
is your time. We've seen a lot of people wait till they retire to do something. And what happens? They never get a chance to do it, unfortunately. Start living in the present moment. Be aware. When you go outside, notice things around you. Notice the trees. Notice the flowers that are beginning to bloom. Notice that the buds are coming out on the tree. Notice the little squirrel that just ran across your path. Notice life. And what you're doing is when you begin to pay attention, the universe knows it, spirit knows it, and it begins to show you more and more and unfold more and more to you and for you. Pay attention, be conscious, be in the now. You know, society tells us to multitask, to do two or three things at the same time. Today, choose to do one thing at one time in that one moment. Be conscious. Be totally into whatever it is you're doing. Something as simple as even watching television and eating. If you're eating, eat. If you're watching television, watch television. Be conscious. Be in the now. Be in the moment. Pay attention where you are. There's a song that words say, hush, hush. God is trying to tell you something. But you've got to be in the moment. You've got to be in the now. Be able to receive it. Be able to hear it. And when you hear it, act on it. Act on it. Dr. Paul just told you I'm no longer at Hillside. I was at Hillside as a member for 40 years. I worked with Dr. Barbara as a minister for 30 years. But Spirit said to me, I, I was having an Abraham experience. Spirit said, it's time to go. Leave your family and everything that's familiar to you and go into a far country that I will show you. And that's what I've done. And I told them, and I'm going to tell you, don't ask me what I'm doing. Don't ask me where, what I'm going to do or where I'm going. I'm being led day by day, step by step. When I get up, I'm like, okay, what are we doing today? I'm trusting in that infinite intelligence and that power that I've been talking about for years. You know, you don't get to talk about it and not live it. You've got to walk your talk. And so everything I've ever asked anyone to do I did myself because I want the experience. I want to know that it works. See, I'm one of those people, you know, just telling me doesn't suffice for me. I have to know that it works. So I'm telling you this morning, it does work. It does work if you're willing to work it if you're willing not to be deterred or blown but by every wind that passes by. And I know sometimes, especially those of you who are really just getting into this new thought stuff, it's like when your family looks at you, they're like, hmm, there she goes again. There he goes again with that stuff. Don't be deterred. Love them anyway. And you keep on doing your stuff. Because it does work. It does work. And now is your time. Say that. Now is my time. No more excuses. No more reasons. No more justification. No more self-pity. No more being a victim. No more procrastination. No more inertia, no more laziness, no, one, no more blaming anyone or anything. No more being too busy. Now is my time. Now is my time. Now is my time. Say it like, get that my 
Let's say it again, but emphasize that my. Now is my time. Now is my time. Now is my time. How'd that feel? That felt good. Somebody said I owned it. But see that, when you get that feeling, that's when you know the change is coming. That, that feeling that you just felt, that's the magnet that draws it to you. So create that situation. Create that circumstance for yourself. And know that now is your time. Because the truth is you don't have any time, other time. We live in the eternal now. As I said earlier, yesterday is a canceled check. Tomorrow is a promissory note. Today is the only cash you have. Spend it wisely. And I have a, a poem by Helen Malakote I'd like to read to you to even bring that point closer. I was regretting the past and fearing the future. Suddenly, my Lord was speaking. My name is I Am. He paused. I waited. He continued. When you live in the past with its mistakes and regrets, it's hard. I'm not there. My name is not I was. When you live in the future with its problems and fears, it's hard. I'm not there. My name is not I will be. When you live in this moment, it's not hard. I am here. My name is I am. I am that I am lives within you. I am that I am is in the present moment. You can't find it in what was and you can't find it in what will be. You can only find it now. And so it is.